I had just turned 19 and was staying at home from college for the next few months. It was summer break time. My mom lives in the city in the same house I grew up in, but my dad had moved into a small home outside the city. It was backed up to the woods and I always felt so relaxed while I was there. Just being away from everything felt so freeing. Anyway, over the course of the summer, I got the bright idea to go camping for a night somewhere out in the woods behind my dad's house. I had all the gear already, and I had gone camping before, so it seemed like a harmless, fun night. I didn't even plan on going that far out either, maybe walking for half an hour or so, then finding a good spot to set up. I left about two hours until sunset, and walked with no music or anything, just soaking in the environment and sounds of nature. I made it far enough out to start setting up my gear. I pitched my tent and got a fire going, then relaxed as the sun started to set and the woods fell quiet. A couple hours into the night, I went to bed. I had planned to leave in the morning, but when I woke up, I felt like hanging out for a little bit longer. I went for a casual walk and sat by the tent. Surprisingly, the day went by much faster than I knew, and before I knew it, the sun was making its way down once more. I packed up my things and cleaned up, then started walking back home. I walked between the trees, having a conversation with myself in my head to pass the time. As the sun started getting lower and lower though, I realized it had been quite a while since I'd started out. I stopped and lifted my head, looking all around me. I didn't recognize the area. Obviously there was no path, so I could have been walking in the right direction or wandering around in circles. Something seemed wrong here though. After an entire minute of looking around, I had honestly no clue which way to go. If I had been going in the right direction, I should have made it home already, or at least to the actual road that my dad's house was on. Embracing the setting sun now, I decided to continue in the direction I was going in, hoping that at some point I'd break through and emerge on a road. As I walked, the woods got darker and darker, sending me into somewhat of a nervous breakdown. I was looking all over for anything to tell me where to go. Now, the woods were too dark to see anything further than 30 feet. All of a sudden, in the darkness, I could see a light flickering in the distance. I got excited, walking quickly towards it. I made out a dark house, sitting in the middle of a bunch of trees. I thought maybe it was one of my dad's neighbors, or at least it would lead me to a road I could walk along. As I approached the opening in the woods where it was, though, I didn't see anything. There were no roads, no lights from other houses, not even a gravel driveway. The house was old-looking, too, resembling more of a cabin style. There was a light on in the downstairs window, so it definitely wasn't vacant or anything. I walked around to the other side of it, staying in the tree line still. There were no signs of any roads or houses on the other side either. Regrettably, I decided my only option was to ask whoever lived there for some help. I walked up to the front door, listening in for a second before ringing the doorbell. Immediately, I heard footsteps sprinting down some stairs right up to the other side. I knew they were probably looking at me through the peephole, so I called out to them through the door. Uh, hi there. I'm, I'm a little bit lost. I was hoping you could uh, tell me which direction the nearest street is. There was a pause, and then they opened the door. Two men were standing there, both looking to be in their mid-forties and appearing kind of disheveled. One of them took a step forward and looked outside behind me at the tree line, as if peeking for anyone else. For a moment, both of the men were quiet. Come inside. We'll help you out. One of the men said. He opened the door wider and stepped aside. Oh, that's okay. I just need you to point me in the right direction. I didn't want to go into some random person's house in the middle of the woods. I also didn't really see the point to it. Both men frowned. Then one of them spoke. 
He just wanted to talk about why I was out here. I told them I had been camping and gotten lost, but they looked at each other like they thought I was lying. One of them stepped out and stood pretty close to me as he looked around at the trees more intently. When he stepped out, though, he revealed the room behind him, which only had a small lamp in the middle of the floor, surrounded by a bunch of dust. I took a step away from the man, and both of them turned cold. Their facial expressions and body language became empty as they stood there in silence. Out of nowhere, one of them tried to tackle me to the ground. Luckily, I reacted quick enough to slip away. The other man tried to grab me as well, and I took off for the trees. I could hear one of the men following behind me. Once I made it into the woods, the man seemed to give up the chase, and soon after, the lights from the house shut off. Hours passed of wandering through the woods in darkness before I finally made it to a road. I discovered I had hiked miles in the wrong direction. I told my dad about the encounter, though, and he took the police to investigate. We were both terrified to hear that the house I'd wandered onto was an old vacation cabin that had been abandoned decades ago. Why the men were there, nobody knows. By the way they were acting, though, it seemed like they were trying not to get caught doing something. If they had succeeded in luring me into their home, I'm not sure if I would have ever been let out. I used to work at an auto parts store. I love cars, so it was a good job for me. One time, something really crazy happened, though. I was working just like any other time. It was the afternoon, and I was the only one in the store working all by myself. I was manning the closing shift. Normally, I would have a co-worker with me, but I believe someone had called in that day. It was a pretty quiet day, though, and I could handle it all just fine. The store wasn't a big chain or anything, so it wasn't all that big. I was working by myself, and no customer seemed to be anywhere in sight. I was just going behind the counter when the door opened and a man walked in. He was skinny with long blonde hair. I remember that he walked up to the front of the counter and then just kind of stood there not saying anything. I said hello to the man and asked him if he needed help with something. The guy simply said no. I was just trying to be nice and friendly. I asked him if he even had a car on him. I was half joking because I figured that if he'd come to an auto store, he had to. But he said no. The guy then said he didn't really know why he was here. I found this pretty strange, needless to say, and I didn't know what to immediately say back to him. The guy then just sort of walked away down one of the aisles. I remember that right after that, another customer walked into the store. It was a guy who needed me to help him with his car battery, so I assisted him with that. Once I was done, I'd completely forgotten about the other guy. I kept working and things picked up a bit. Several more customers came in, and I helped them all one by one. The hours passed by, and soon it was time for me to close up shop. Like I said, I was all by myself. I started by making sure nobody was still in the store. I went up and down every single aisle. Like I said before, the store was not that big, so it didn't take very long. No one appeared to be in there. I finished up a couple things and then went to lock the doors. As I was approaching them, though, I heard a noise behind me. I looked back, and out of nowhere I saw a guy running in my direction. I realized it was that exact same guy from earlier. He must have been hiding somewhere inside the store. It was really shocking. The way he was aggressively running at me told me that I needed to get away right now. I pulled open the doors as fast as I could and sprinted out of the shop. I ran into the dark parking lot. Surprisingly, the guy kept chasing after me. I ran all the way to my car and jumped inside it, barely having time to close the doors. The man didn't even try to stop. He just ran right into my car. I locked the doors as he began trying to open it, 
I had no clue what he wanted from me. He then started slamming on the window for a few moments and even went to pick up a rock. I put the car into reverse and was about to back out and drive away. Before I could though, the guy just ran off in another direction. I stopped and watched him, running out of the parking lot and behind the building. I put my car into park and decided to go back inside the store. It was my responsibility, and I hadn't actually managed to lock the doors. I got out of my car and ran inside. Then I locked the doors and called the police. I waited for them to arrive, and in the meantime I witnessed the man running by. He went back into the parking lot. I thought that he might try to enter the store once more, or perhaps try and break into my vehicle, but instead he ran out of the lot in another direction. The cops got there just minutes later. I spoke with them for a while, telling them about what happened. They said they would look around for the guy, and then I left and went home. I never heard anything more about it. I'm not sure if they caught the guy or what his deal was, but for the rest of the time that I worked there, I never saw him again. This happened when I was driving home from work late one night. I had just gotten off and was pretty tired. It was almost midnight, or something of the like. I had made it most of the way back in my old beat-up car. It was a green 1997 Chevy Cavalier. It barely ran, honestly. As I was about 75% of the way home, I found myself driving through a very quiet area. There were no other cars on the street at all, and it was mostly just woods on both sides. Out of nowhere, my car of course started dying on me. I didn't know what to do. I pulled over to the side of the road and tried to start it again. Nothing happened at all. My next course of action was to take out my phone and call for roadside assistance. Unfortunately, as I tried this, my phone had no signal. Needless to say, this was all very frustrating. I wasn't really sure what to do. I sat there for a few minutes, thinking of my options. I didn't know enough about cars to try and solve the problem myself. I also couldn't seem to get a hold of anybody. I might have to walk on my own to try and find a gas station or something. Thing is, I didn't really know if there were any close by. As I was sitting in my car trying to brainstorm a solution to my problem, I saw some headlights appear on the road behind me. This was the first other car I had seen in quite a long while. I thought about getting out and flagging them down for a second, but I thought better of it. You don't know who could be driving down the street, especially this late at night. I decided to stay put in my car. As the vehicle approached though, I could see it was slowing down. They pulled over to the side just behind me. I got nervous when I saw this. Sure, it could be a good citizen trying to help me out but it was also equally likely someone up to no good. With it being so late and dark out, I couldn't help but feel a little bit scared. The car stopped about 50 feet behind me, and the light shut off. It appeared to be a small kind of pickup truck. I watched in my mirror, and after a few seconds, the driver's door opened up. I saw a man step out, then immediately lean into his car and stick his head in there. It looked like he was grabbing something. When he emerged, I saw he had just put on a clown mask on his head. That's what he was doing. It really gave me the creeps. I wasn't sure why he had done this, but I didn't think it was funny. He started walking over to me. He was moving at a pretty fast pace, too. I had to make a decision fast. I don't remember what was going through my head in that moment. I just know that I opened my driver's door and left my vehicle. I sprinted as fast as I could past my car and along the side of the road. As I did, I didn't look back, but I did hear the clown start to run after me. This made me go even faster. I kept running along the side of the road, but the road went on a lot farther than I imagined. I'm not sure why, but I suddenly took a sharp right 
and took off into the woods. I just wanted to get away from this clown. I thought it would be harder for him to see me. There I was sprinting through the woods for a while. I did hear the clown enter behind me. After a couple minutes, I slowed down a little. It was at that point I realized I couldn't hear him anymore. I continued to slow down, now just walking. I then realized he'd likely stopped the chase. I took my phone out to see if it now had a signal, and luckily I did. I then dialed 911 and told them I was being chased through a forest by a clown. My car had broken down on the side of the road. I'm not sure what they thought when they heard that, but it was the entire truth. I gave them my location best as I could and waited there in the middle of the woods for a while. I didn't hear anything else. At some point, I decided to try and walk back to my car. I went through the woods back the way I came and walked for several minutes, trying to make my way back to the road. As I was passing by, I noticed a small clearing on the other side. Something caught my eye. The clown was in there, just standing behind a tree. I noticed the whiteness of his mask. It was too late for me to hide. He looked over at me, and I saw him emerge from behind his hiding place. He started to move in my direction. I started running again, trying to get back to the main road. The clown began the chase once more. It was another exhausting chase. I ran even faster this time. It took me a full minute before I reached the road. When I did, I took off running in the direction my car was parked. I did look back this time and saw the clown emerging from the woods soon after. I kept running. A few seconds later, I saw flashing lights up ahead. The police were already here. I kept running until I saw my car and slowed down to a jog. I felt much better now. I looked back, but the clown was now gone. He must have fled back into the woods. I met up with the police. The clown guy's truck was still parked right behind my car. The police said they would stay with me until roadside service got there, and they were able to call for me because I had no signal in the area. The clown man did not return. When my road service came and towed my car, I got a ride back home. The clown's truck was still there even then. When I left, he was nowhere to be seen. I'm not sure if he just kept hiding in the woods the whole time or what. Next time I drove by that area, the truck was long gone. I don't know what that clown was planning to do that night, but I'm really glad I ran from him. I was driving back to my hometown from a work trip I had earlier in the week. I declined the free flight to and from because I wanted to take some time off to myself while I was there and enjoy a small vacation. Driving long distance wasn't something I'd ever really done before though. The most I'd gone was about 10 hours and that was with a stop at a hotel halfway through. This road trip was way longer. It was nearly 20 hours. I had only scheduled a single hotel, but just because I'd never driven that long before, it didn't make me think I couldn't do it or anything. The drive started out okay, going through cities and towns, having plenty of other cars around me, seemingly taking the same route. As I got further out, though, the cars became less and less common, and the towns pretty much disappeared altogether. The roads became nothing but fields of grass on either side, or dense forests. By 5 p.m., the light drizzling that had started earlier became a more intense downpour, hard enough to make it difficult to see. It seemed like the more I drove out into this forested area, the harder the rain fell. I hoped it would at least stop by sunset, but if it didn't, I would be in real trouble. Needless to say, it did not. I was now really focused on the road, driving slowly and carefully, trying to make sure I navigated without sliding into a ditch or something. I drove through this awful rain for an entire hour past sunset, 
That was when I started to realize the road was becoming a lot more winding and less and less straight. It began taking me much deeper into the forest, where the trees were all close together. After a while, they started blocking the view ahead. I started to get really nervous. It was really odd for a highway to be like this. I slowed down and pulled off to the side of the road, stopping on the shoulder. I took my phone out and tried searching up the directions, but there was no service. All I'd remembered of the route was that I had to take the same highway pretty much the entire way there. Maybe I was on the right road and just paranoid, or maybe I'd been focusing so hard on trying to see through the rain that I'd accidentally merged onto a different one entirely. The problem was, I had no way to figure out which of those possibilities was the right one. I looked out the windows, in hopes I'd see a sign or anything that could give me an idea of where I was. All I could see through the harsh rain were the woods all around me, fading into total pitch blackness beyond the sight of my headlights. Only a minute or so after I had stopped, though, a light came up from behind me. I looked in the mirror as it got brighter and brighter. Rounding one of the corners and coming toward my vehicle was a car. Their headlights were so bright I couldn't even really make it out through all the light. It was beaming in my mirrors. I watched as the light started moving slower and slower until it stopped right behind me. Part of me felt relieved that someone had stopped to help me, but another part was thinking of other possibilities. A whole minute passed by as the car stayed there, leaving their headlights on and showing no signs of anything. All of a sudden, the door opened. It was still too bright to see much of anything. I could just make out the dark outline of a man emerging from the light, though, and coming right up to my window. It was a man wearing a dark hoodie, unbothered by the rain. He leaned on the door while I rolled the window down just slightly. He asked if I needed some help, and I responded by explaining I was just needing to know where I was and if I was still on the right highway. He looked at me, then my back seat. Then he nodded. Yeah, I can help you with that. Just let me get my phone. He began walking off as I rolled my window back up. There was something off about my interaction with him, but I couldn't figure out what it was exactly. Something just felt wrong. Why didn't he know what road we were on, or if we were on the highway already? I watched in the mirrors until the man went behind the glaring lights again. I could see him shuffling around in his car for something. There was a few moments before he came back out and made his way back over. In the moments before he reached my car, though, I caught a glimpse of something in his hand. Just as I reacted and put the car in drive... The man knelt down by my back tire and jammed something into it. I slammed on the gas, seeing the man get startled and stumble away. I drove as fast as I could. I knew he'd probably try to catch up, so I drove in a panic for several minutes, fearing the thought of seeing those lights coming up behind me. Luckily, though, they never did. I made it about three miles before I finally happened upon an intersection with a sign for a gas station up ahead. When I pulled in, I of course called the police. I found out the man had stabbed my tire with a screwdriver that was actually still wedged into the side of it. It was hanging partially out, but was still stuck in there. The fact that it was sealing the hole is probably the only reason I was able to make it away without breaking down on the road. If I had given even a second too late of thought at driving away... I don't think I would have ever been seen after that night. Last year, I had a quite strange experience. I was at home one night all alone in my apartment when out of nowhere I got a text message from a random number. I clicked on it to see what was going on, only to find a picture had been sent. It was a picture of a screenshot of my Facebook profile. I found this to be very strange. I didn't know who was sending this to me or why, so I responded to the text. I asked who this was, but I never did get a reply. 
I soon enough forgot about it. Several nights later, a similar situation occurred. I was by myself at home when I got another random text. I looked and saw it was from the same number. This time, it was another image. It was a screenshot of a photo of my apartment complex. I didn't know what to make of this either. I responded once again asking who this was that was texting me. I did not immediately get a reply. At this point, I was thinking it was some sort of prank or something. I went into a group chat I had with some friends and asked if any of them was responsible. Each of them denied it, and I really believed they meant it. It just didn't seem like something they would do. I wanted it to be one of them though, because it was really creeping me out. That very same night, I received another message from the same number. As soon as I heard that text notification, I had a bad feeling. When I looked, it was another picture. This one was a screenshot of what looked like a news story. This news story had to be fake, though. It said Michigan man beaten unconscious. Then there was a picture of me below the title. The picture had been taken either from my Facebook profile or from my Instagram. It was really alarming now. Was this their kind of way of threatening me with violence? Maybe this was all supposed to be a threatening thing. They clearly knew who I was, and they knew where I lived, too. Now, apparently, they wanted to beat me unconscious. I didn't respond to this message this time. I didn't really know what to say. That very same night, I went to bed at the usual time. I was a little bit concerned and confused by the whole thing, but I didn't think it was that serious yet. Probably just a prank or troll of some kind. That all changed, though, when I was awoken that night suddenly by the sound of a loud bang on my front door. I got up and got out of my bedroom into the living room. The sound was much louder. I went over to the door to see what was going on. When I looked to the other side, I saw a man was standing there, hitting the door with some kind of object. I couldn't make out what it was, and I couldn't see the guy's face that well either. He was looking down, trying to conceal his features. I didn't want to stay there by the door, so I backed away from it. It seemed like the man might actually break in at some point. I went into my bedroom and closed the door and locked it, then called the police. All the while, the man kept attacking my door. Probably less than a minute after I got off the phone with the police, I heard a really loud noise. It seemed like the door had been broken in. The next thing I knew, I heard footsteps inside. I moved to the back corner of my bedroom. The footsteps walked around, and within a minute seemed to head right for my bedroom area. I heard them get to the end of the hallway, and my heart started racing. This man tried to open my bedroom door, which was locked at the time. They started banging on this door too. I knew this one wouldn't hold up for long. Eventually, he would be able to break my door down, and then who knew what he would do to me. I grabbed the blankets from my bed and hid underneath them, not knowing what else to do. The man kept attacking the door for three minutes or so. Then, finally, the police arrived. It was great timing, actually. They entered my apartment and were able to grab the man immediately. He was arrested for breaking into my place, and I pressed charges against him. The craziest thing, though, was I had no idea who this guy was. I had never seen him before, and none of my friends or family had ever seen him either. I never found out how he even got my number or address or anything. It remains the scariest experience I've ever had. Over the last five years, I've been working at different odd jobs all around the country. I live in a van, so I move around a lot. A few months out of the year, I have to stay in an area for an extended amount of time, though, in order to rack up some cash before moving on. At this point in time, I was staying in the mid-east portion of Utah. I'd taken up a job at a gas station. It was located on a road that was really only used by locals, 
to go in and out of state without having to deal with highway traffic. There was nothing else on this route at all. It was simply a road with a lone gas station for the occasional driver to fill up at. That's kind of why it was perfect for me, though. The location of it didn't matter, since I lived out of a van anyway. I could easily stay out there for an extended amount of time and work away. I'd been there for a bit over a month, and up to this point, I was still working random shifts, really. This day, I was working 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It was really not a special night by any means. No customers aside from a few stopping by the pumps, and not much to do as far as stocking items or anything. I was mostly just standing around on my phone, or pacing around the store making the shelves look nice. Around 1am or so, a customer pulled into the station parking lot in one of the few spaces right in front of the door. Knowing they must be intending to come inside, I went back to the counter. A man got out and came into the shop, looking over and smiling at me. He gave me a nod as he turned down one of the aisles. He started whistling as he looked at a couple of things and picked them up, then put them back down and continued down the aisle, repeating this over and over. I wasn't sure if he was just taking a break from driving or if he actually wanted to buy something. The items he was picking up and looking at were all different, and he didn't seem to be interested in actually buying any of them. He then abruptly stopped whistling, walked over to the door and left without purchasing anything. I don't think he stole anything, but it was quite a strange experience. He got into his car and started moving around, reaching into his back seat before getting back out and coming into the shop again. After seeing that, I wasn't feeling too comfortable. This seemed almost exactly how I thought an armed robbery would begin. The aggression I was expecting when he came back in didn't happen though. He walked over to the counter and asked how my night was going. A quick back and forth of small talk occurred, and I acted as normal as I could. I was thinking that perhaps I was overthinking this. At that point, he asked if I could come out and help him with his car. He said his tires needed some air, but he didn't see any pumps outside. This station didn't have any air pumps for self-use, but we did carry a handheld air compressor for emergency situations. I grabbed it and followed the man out to his car. He pointed down at the tire that needed it, and I ducked down and put the compressor line in. I had it in for less than 10 seconds before it read the pressure to be at the perfect level. I looked over at the man. He was standing over me, with no expression on his face. I grabbed everything and stood up as quickly as possible, starting to walk back to the shop. He stopped me by running in front of the door. His right hand was deep inside his jacket pocket as he stared at me with a cold face. I told him to move, but of course he stayed in front of the door. I could see in his eyes he was preparing to do something. I took a step back, trying to do what I could to calm the intensity of the situation. Just as it looked like the man was about to snap, he suddenly ran around me and jumped into his car, pulling out and speeding away. I took this time to go inside and call 911. Surprisingly, they arrived only minutes later. It turned out they were already on the chase, looking for the exact car that man was driving. The officer stated the man was on the run from a recently committed crime near the border. They didn't give me any details but the way they described it made it clear this was not just some small robbery suspect or something. After my statement, they got on the road again, and after that, I never got any further updates. I tried to look up recent crimes and everything, but I couldn't find anything useful. I don't know what that guy was planning to do, or why he stopped by the station. My best guess could have been to steal my van and conceal his tracks or at least delay them. Whatever crime he had committed was quite serious, so I think my life could have easily been at risk. Why he chose to spare me that night is completely unknown.
Alright, so this happened to me last week on Sunday evening. Every Friday, I go to see my boyfriend, who doesn't live in the same city as me, but in a city right next to mine. It takes an hour by car to get to his place. Now, I don't have a driver's license, because I live in a big city and I don't really need a car to go to my university or my job. I just use the subway. You have to know, though, that it's really difficult to travel by train in France right now because of some strikes going on. So a lot of people are traveling by carpooling. We have a very famous app to travel like this. It costs less and it's easier to travel. I use this app for almost one and a half years now, and I'd never had any problems before. Last Sunday, I went on the app to book a carpool with a woman in her late 40s. I prefer to travel with women because I'm a woman myself. I'm 21 years old. This time turned out not to be quite so safe, though. I booked my carpool and she wrote me on my personal number to let me know she would come pick me up at 6.20 p.m. I go to the meeting place and she arrives on time. I climb into her car, but I immediately notice she was acting a little bit strange. I didn't give it too much thought, though. After all, it was only an hour by car to get to my destination. What could happen to me in that time? There were no other passengers, mind you. I was scrolling on my phone, not really paying much attention. When you take a carpool like this, the principle is that the driver takes the highway and doesn't leave until we arrive at one of our destinations. Nobody ever gets off the highway. It's really weird if someone does that because then they have to pay a big toll. 30 minutes later, I noticed we were already at the toll road. I started to look around, but didn't recognize the area we were at. I realized she had not gotten off the exit she was supposed to take. I don't know why, but my survival instincts immediately awoke. I took a screenshot of the conversation I had earlier with her in the day and sent it to my boyfriend and half-sister. I told them if I didn't reply, and they hadn't heard from me within the hour, to call the police immediately. I also turned my GPS on just in case. I turned to the woman and asked her what was going on. What are you doing? This isn't the right exit. She started to act even stranger than she had been before. Oh yeah, I know. I just wanted to visit something cool with you. What? Are you kidding me? I'm not going anywhere with you. I paid you to drive to my city. Now I'm not sitting here to have fun with you or hang out. You're gonna drive us where we're supposed to go. Instead, she took a turn down this really dark and creepy road. Don't be afraid, she replied. I just want to spend some time with you. Don't you get it? I don't want to spend time with you. Take the highway and get us to where we're supposed to go. She told me she was taking a shortcut because there was too much traffic. I texted my boyfriend everything she was saying. He went to the traffic website and told me there was no traffic at all around our destination right now. She was lying to me clearly. Something bad was going to happen to me if I didn't think quickly. I have no idea how this came to my mind, but here's what I told her. Okay, listen here. You're gonna drive me where we're supposed to go, alright? I warned my boyfriend and my sister that you're acting weird, and my father works for Interpol. I'll text him in one minute, if you don't go the right way. All of a sudden, she got very anxious. She started to insult me and scream at me, but still went back to the highway. She didn't know this, but it was not actually true. My father did work for Interpol back in the day, but he had long since quit his job to start a new life in another country with my mother, brother, and I. He left us behind at some point, and I didn't even talk to him anymore. That's another story which doesn't belong here, though. She drove me to the right place and told me to get out. I didn't want to spend any more time with her, so I was all too happy to jump out. I went home safely and immediately contacted the application support service. They wrote me back and thanked me for warning them. A few days later, they sent me another mail, telling me they were very sorry and that they would erase her profile immediately. While nothing bad happened to me technically, it was a very dangerous situation, 
I don't know what she was planning to do to me if she hadn't bought my lie. My father will never know, since I haven't seen him in a long time, but he really saved me that day. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now, guys, so thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.